Well, in this video I have a Dick Smith FM wireless microphone and I dug out my red boom box along with the dodgy tape deck in it because I've now got a red FM wireless microphone to go with it. I forget exactly what years these were but somewhere around 84 to 87 or something in, in the Dick Smith catalogue, catalogue C1070. Interestingly this one has a uh, price sticker which when you look up the phone number on it is actually Dick Smith head office so I didn't really re realize that they sold stuff from their head office but they must have actually had a retail store so that's the microphone this is a Pro 2 condenser mic so maybe that was what it was before Dick Smith got their badge put on it and we've got some little accessories I think they had to hold the batteries or something Got a screw on microphone. So, yeah, very 80s looking. I guess you could hold that in your hand with the mic sticking out the back. Much like our lady on the front cover, although she's got hers retracted because, well, I guess if you're up close, it probably doesn't matter. It doesn't look like it's ever been used other than the bit being broken off the end of the box when someone removed it. Service manual. Well, I doubt it's a service manual. So the batteries install the rubber insulator ring at both ends of the battery. Well, four pieces, so we, someone's robbed us of one of those unless it's inside it somewhere. Open the microphone counterclockwise. That's where she unscrew the end of it. I would have thought it was at the antenna end, isn't it? We've been robbed of a battery, I think, or battery piece. Oh, I see, this just sort of holds them you think that would make them stick in there but maybe it's small enough yeah they slide i think that'll be all right with one missing not sure if these batteries are any good i guess i should have checked them first probably just one end is good enough but i'm sure you could jury rig something up to do that i take it with the negatives when they show it that way Open the body, screw the head to the body clockwise, adjustments of the receiver. Oh, I feel ripped off that it's missing one of those. Turn and switch the microphone to on position. Extend the antenna. Put the microphone in front of the speaker or receiver facing it. Adjust until you turn its frequency just as frequency around 94 megahertz on FM. If the speaker gives fluttering sound, it means the correct total thought you've got feedback. In order to acquire a fascinating sound quality during broadcast, please set treble, treble bass and tone at center position and turn the muting or loudness device to off. Yeah, maximum maximum effective distance of this microphone in vacancy is about 100 meters if you find the microphone is not working well and the effective distance the quality of the volume of the sound is poor maybe it's time you change the batteries when the mic's not in use please take the batteries out to ensure a longer lifetime of the batteries and mic certainly ensures a longer life of the mic given how long these things tended to get put in the cupboard or whatever one radio can only accept signals from one microphone, but the signals of the microphone can be received by several radios at the same TIM. If you want to use more than two sets of microphones simultaneously in the same compound, then you must use more than two sets of radios having different frequencies. Avoid dropping or shaking in any case. Put away from dampness, heat and sunshine. And someone's sort of hand drawn across over a very dodgy looking sun drips and a microphone going bang on the floor I guess oh so I'm having a bit of fun with that and poorly translated English does it say where it was actually made oh that's right it's got a little made in Taiwan label there so not the worst translated menu I've ever read Dick Smith's face all over the box a little bit of damage to the box and $24.50 originally so it depreciated quite a lot over the years since it was only $5 for this but I couldn't resist it in a Dick Smith box now I think we've got this radio on a few in, in Kingston FM on 
Well, I think we're on about 96 with that station. Better get rid of that. Yeah. Do we, do we get any fluttering? I don't think it's working. Oh, hello. Oh, it is working. It is actually working on, don't know, that's above 96 megahertz, so I think. Where's the FM dial? It's around 100. I'm not sure if that's the radio or this. Testing one, two. We've got a fine tuning here, too, which is handy. Testing one, two. Yeah, that seems to be working. Got to hold it up pretty close, and then it's a bit distorted, I think. Well, we get feedback, so that's a good sign. Turn the volume right up. Oh, that's better. Okay. So if you turn the volume right up, it seems to work all right. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Not sure if it's still working. I think it is. 20 metres away or something. Well, not quite that much. volume control. That seems to work quite well. Not quite the right colour for my stereo but it's kind of a cool accessory to have with it. Very much around the same time this thing would have been built. So yeah not your not your normal boombox accessory but I guess it's something you could could kind of go with it. So with a couple of batteries and a few red cassettes, even though I think they're a bit later, those ones. Red microphone, we're set to party 1980s style, I guess. Just need a red mixtape to go with it. Well, I guess we can make our own. Some of these boxes did have mic mixing and stuff. Not sure about this one, but... I've at least got external left and right mics. Imbalance volume, probably only for recording, but that would have been kind of a cool thing back in the 80s to be able to hear yourself over the radio. And people did use these sort of things for spruiking and stuff in stores, so you could just use a normal boombox, even if it didn't have mic inputs and you had a wireless microphone, you could walk around and spruik whatever you were selling. And you know, maybe at some sort of public events or something. Probably good enough quality for that sort of thing. If you just got a sort of fairly amateur setup and you don't want to rent out any special equipment. But yeah, that's actually looks like it's pretty much in mint condition. Other than the one battery thing missing, the label's a little dodgy, but that's probably I think that's just the plastic coating they put on it, the little safety little scratch resistant label that someone hasn't peeled off and that's gone lumpy over time, as they always do. But yeah, something a bit different, and it still works. I don't think we can even look in this thing. I'm not sure that screw's a good thing. I don't like the feel of that. I don't think I'll risk breaking that bit. looks all glued together. I can't imagine, yeah, unless they unscrew or something, but I'm not going to risk doing it. I doubt there's much interesting to see in there anyway, but it does sound like it's a half half decent quality unit much better than the Dick Smith FM bug kit that you could build back then from the fun way into electronics which is pretty rubbish this is a much better unit but I don't know what that kit used to cost probably five dollars or something versus 25 for this one but at least the um, plastic hasn't eaten into the polystyrene or vice versa the polystyrene into the plastic that's something often you get things this old and the polystyrene has eaten into the plastic especially with like mains power cords and stuff they always seem to react so I think we'll pop that one back in its box 
it was just a little video just a, I thought it was an interesting little device I say a nice little go with for a red boom box I guess and you know that was probably the closest you had to karaoke back in those days but yeah they did have some commercial uses and stuff and a bit of a novelty for people to play around with sort of thing the kids could buy and sing along to the radio or something or record yourself it's probably a bit fancy you normally just used a wired microphone if you wanted to just record yourself but this is another way of doing it and yeah another way of getting the signal across without any wires or anything so good for sort of public events and stuff where you don't want cables and everything running around but it was actually a bit better looking I, I would have thought looking at the catalogue it was a pretty plasticky thing and I guess it kind of is but it actually looks quite a bit nicer than you'd expect from the black and white pictures in the catalogues but I'll, I'll find though I did find the ads went through a few different catalogues and it was in there for about four years I think so not just one of their sort of bulk purchases or something sell them sell them off and get rid of them type of things so maybe they were reasonably popular and lasted a while although we could have just got a container load of them really cheap and kept selling them till they disappeared but anyway that's that one so thanks for watching